There she is. Hey, Farah. Hi, hi, hi. Sorry about that. Little technical issues. No problem. Was it the app forcing force quit the apps on your phone? I did all the force quitting the apps before, and it, it still happened. So <laughs> hopefully we're good. Sorry for the delay, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for the lovely introduction. My fierce female founder of the agency. Oh my god, I love all the FFFs. Yes, we're going to have so much fun today, Vera. So let's get to it. I'm going to open with some of your listings because I'm so excited to have you on the show. But we made a little game for you and for the audience at home, you guys. We're going to play the Open Housewives of Beverly Hills. The open Housewives, okay. Vera is representing not one but two housewives selling their homes. Yep. The pressure. The pressure. I mean, the pressure, right? But these ladies, you have, you can't not sell the house. We got to do it quick. We got to do it fast. We got to live up to expectations. Okay. Yes, the pressure is on for sure. But I'm and not worried about it. I'm not worried at all. But do you usually get these listings? This is the first time, actually. Well, no. One of them is, you know, a little a different situation. But the other one is actually my first other housewife. So it's pretty exciting. Always fun to work with, you know, friends and family. Um, so this will be my first. And okay, so the first one is on 2033 Hercules Drive, which if they don't know Hercules Drive, it's on Mount Olympus, right, Farah? You're going to exactly. take us through. Take us so through this one and you're, you're going to guess which housewife lives in this house. Somebody's going to guess? Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah, it's located in Mount Olympus, which is such a great neighborhood. It's so central to everything. So easy to get everywhere. But also what's great is that it's really a neighborhood. You know, you have sidewalks. You're not too yes. far up in the hills. You get parking. So it's very, very family friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get views, and same views. You get views, and that's, you know, number one for most people these days. So it kind of checks a lot of boxes, and it's a great uh, home for a family. It's a great home for a single person, a couple. It really, you know, speaks to a lot of different demographics. So we've been getting a crazy amount of inquiries on this property and so many showings. So this one's going to go fast for sure. Farrah, Fer, do you get any super fans who are like, oh, I have to see this house because um, a housewife lives here? Or are they real buyers? Most have all been real. I think they're all real buyers. But a few people kind of give them the tour of the house. And then at the end, they're like, I know you. <laughs> no. They're like, you know, you're Kyle's daughter. We love your mom. And a few mm -hmm. people did know which housewife owned this house. And they recognized They did. The they did. The first one they did. was Aura. Du Wait, I was scrolling back. There's so many comments. I'm going to give it to OC Mermaid Teddy. That's correct. That's it's right. Teddy Mellencamp's for 2.950 on Hercules Drive's four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and almost 3,000 square feet. What's your favorite feature of this house, Farah? The views. No doubt the views. I am. To find a view property, like with real views. Um, I mean, at night, I was there the other night. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. For under 3 million is pretty hard to find in LA. And so, central. Mount Olympus is very central in Los Angeles. You guys are very, right. very central. And also, not to mention, this house has such a great pool, a uh, great outdoor space. So it's really great for entertaining. Um, and yeah. But the views Ooh, are very you're, you're good at this. You're good at selling. Um, so I were you it. showing it as a twilight showing last night? I was. The other night it was for a night. It was actually not even twilight. It was nighttime. They wanted to see it like full dark, full city lights. And yeah. that was a second or third showing with these buyers. So they're pretty serious. Mm. And they fell in love after they saw it at night. I, did you, what do you do for a twilight showing to really sell it? I know back in the old days, people used to bake cookies, but that's kind of passe Ooh. now. Oh, you're putting me to shame. Just you know, <laughs> having a, a great vibe, you know, like ambiance, have the music playing, like some right? candles. Um, but you don't want to do too much because you don't want to distract from what they're looking at. Um, but more just making it feel homey and welcoming so they can imagine it. what, you know, their life would be like there. I love it. And do, someone, David Dandelion or Dylan in the comment section is like, do you wear a mask when showing properties these days? Oh, yeah. We have to wear, there's a crazy protocol nowadays. You have to wear masks. You have to have form signed before by everybody, the buyers, the sellers. Oh yeah, you have to sign the forms. You have well, to sign so the forms, hand sanitizer, everyone stays apart from each other. The buyers can't touch anything. We have to open everything for them. So there's Ooh. some strict protocol. 
Touchless showings. And what is Teddy's favorite feature of this house that she's selling? I would imagine also the view. But she raised uh, her kids there when she lived Aww. there. So I'm sure that just the family-friendly nature and um, just the memories, all those things. Mm, that's true. I love this view. We're playing the open housewives of Beverly Hills. Open housewives. I love what you're doing, by the way. This is so much fun. Isn't this fun? It's like, so I fun. Like to be able to just you know, shoot this, uh, shoot, well, I can't say, I yeah, get it, shoot I this get shit it. I was with people. The same thing. Uh, yes, and just talk about these incredible listings that you guys have, and you also give us some insight into your personal lives. So hey, my cousin you. Paris just said hi. Hey, Paris. Hey, <laughs> Paris Hilton. Okay, so on to the next house that you're selling. What? We all recognize this house. Which Come house? Come on, guys. You guys, Come on, guys. Get, you have to get this one. You cannot not get this one. So with this house, are you getting a lot of looky loose? Because it's been on the market. You guys had it on the market. And yes, then and then it was it. it was rented out for a year, so we had a tenant in there, and mm. then she recently moved out, so we brought it back on the market. And um, yeah, people recognize the house for sure, but we have to make sure to really vet people before you know and make yes. sure they're serious um, because you know with the looky loose. It's the looky loose. It must be so look. crazy. It is. It can be. It can be. Now you put it back on the market for a, a, a price improvement, we like to say. Price improvement, of, yes we there, did. There you go, of a million dollars. So mm -hmm. it's listed now for 5.9. Tell me, as growing up in this house, what was your favorite memory of this home? Ooh. Well, we had some really fun white parties. I don't know if you guys remember the white yes. parties back yes, in the day in this the yard. Perfect timing. <laughs> Um, we had great parties in that house. It was so much fun. There's a lot of entertaining space, a lot of outdoors. We would tent the, the tennis court. It's not a full tennis court, but we would make that beautiful. We had really pretty, uh, sometimes we'd have, you know, entertainers in the pool. Um, so that was a really fun house to have gatherings. And Did you ever sneak too. out? Did you ever sneak out of this house? Well, I actually didn't live there. That was not the house that we lived in when I was in high school. Ooh. And second of all, I've ne I did not. I was not a sneaker outer kind of girl. <laughs> you just walked so out. <laughs> my friends all did it, and I was like, "Darn it! I really wish I could. I want to do that, but I was always scared to break the rules. So unfortunately, so um, you and well, not dad, not unfortunately. You and your dad, Mauricio, are listing this for five nine five zero down from six nine five zero. Why the yep. price improvement? Tell me. Well, just because you know we are ready to sell this house. They've moved on. Um, it is. It's one of those houses that just kept on giving. I mean, it's seven bedrooms. There's a movie theater, there's multiple living spaces, plus an office. Um, so really someone, you know, they probably put a little work into it at this point. Mm -hmm. So we kind of are leaving a little room for someone to take what we made, which is amazing and beautiful, and just maybe make it a little more contemporary. Um, and where are we in Los Angeles? Like, are we, it says LA, California, what neighborhood? So we're in Bel Air. So our old house is located in Bel Air. Up in the hills, um, also very central because you can get really easily to Brentwood, to Malibu. Um, you're also close to Beverly Hills. You're close to the Glen Center, which is my one of my personal favorite neighborhood uh, hang and spots. And you have a house with history, this iconic foyer from Beverly Hills Real Housewives. Obviously, it's Kyle Richards' home. And that was the open housewives of Beverly Hills. Thank you for playing, Vera. Of course. Your listings, of course. Yes. <laughs> 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 well, good luck with those. Let's move on. Farah, we're going to play another game um, called Real Talk Tribe Vibes, where I'm going to shoot off some questions about your career, and I want you to answer really quickly and give us okay. some of your insightful... Now I know how my mom feels. <laughs> yes, exactly. This for is so you. scary and fun. No, not this scary. is scary and fun. And just for the audience knows, I didn't send her these questions in advance, so give her... Uh-oh. All right. Uh, in COVID, what have you become better at saying no to? Uh, I would say just, I mean, people that want to meet up sometimes and I'm like, or like, oh, you know, there's this party going on. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, <laughs> no I was well, already having like Jomo before. Oh, sorry. It's supposed to be quick. So yes, going to places that I don't want to go to. Going, going to parties, I love saying no to that. Best closing advice to give agents who are watching, which I think we have a mix of agents and fans watching, but how do you close a deal? 
Oh, how to close the deal? Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, a lot of people show properties and all these things, but they're not very good at following up because they assume that, oh, you know, if they, if they wanted to come back, they would. But sometimes, you know, you need That's to true. reach back out again and just make sure um, and kind of not let those loose ends, you know, fall through. And it's you're very important for sellers too. Sellers always want to make sure that you're, they're following up with, you know, prospective buyers that came through, especially if they seem interested. Yeah, your dad told me once to always leave the door open, even if you lose the deal or if they don't buy the yeah. house. Yeah, definitely. You never know it. because you might think, you know, have find a listing next week and you might think, oh, that might work for that buyer, whether it's your own or the agent. You call the agent and say, hey, you know, that didn't work for them, but what about this one? So exactly. you kind of have to get creative sometimes to connect the dots. And if you could have a billboard on Sunset Boulevard, say your personal mantra, what would your billboard say? This that's easy. What? It would definitely be strive for progress, not perfection. I love because, that. And you came up with that just real fast, Farah. Well, I, because I think about it all the time because I am definitely a perfectionist. So I have to remind myself, you know, don't take forever to write this email. It's mm -hmm. okay. It's be perfect. Send it off. You know, keep it, <laughs> keep it moving. Um, Does that come from growing up in the spotlight? It's possible. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I never really thought about it in that way. But that is possible. But I was like that as a, actually no, actually no, because I was like that as a very little kid in school too. So way before, way before all this. A little gossip for the fans. I hear you're working on not only a book, but a podcast, but you're too much of a perfectionist to actually start. Is that true? Oh my God. But pretty much, yeah. Yes. <laughs> real talk. Yes, yes. It's real I'm, talk. I am working on it. That is true. And it mm. will come eventually, but it's really hard, you know, with a, full-time job that's pretty much I mean not 24 7 but basically and on weekends every day I'm like okay I'm gonna put 30 minutes and get you know and I do work on it from when I can from time to time but it is hard because this job is is very uh demanding and business is booming right now I think a lot of businesses are on hold and ours is exploding it's it's very difficult to keep up um it advice is. that you'd give your younger agent self or just your young self I mean, you, you're still very young. You're like in your 20s. I'm actually 31, but thank you very much. Okay. Um, advice, I would tell myself. I'm so old. Not to just, not to stress so much, not to worry. I'm a worrier when it comes to this, you know, work and career and, you know, pleasing uh, clients, making sure that they're all happy. And that's good. But sometimes it just, it's okay. Don't worry so much, you know, just do your best. Right? Like, if I could go back in time and tell my younger self, like, everything's going to work out. Just exactly. Like, That's another great one. Exactly. Everything's going to work out. Unusual habit or absurd thing you love to do oh. that no one knows. Unusual habit, habit or, or absurd. Absurd. Like, I like to listen to musicals and dance around in my living room and sing at the top of my lungs when no one's watching. I love that too. I mean, unusual or absurd. I really like hanging out with my cats. <laughs> How many cats like do you a have? Crazy cat lady. Are I'm sure I can think of something better, but what? I, knew I, liked you, Sarah. I am a weirdo, though, that's for sure. I, I mean, I do probably do a lot of unusual, weird things all the oh, time. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to the cats. How many cats do you have, and what is the breed? I have two, and they're not a fancy breed. They Ooh. are like you know, cute little rescues. Um, and they are somewhere around here, blue and jade. And they're the cutest, cutest little things I'm obsessed well, with. Well, if they come by, grab the cat, I'd love to see them. I'm surprised, usually one of mine is like a dog and she likes to mess with everything. So I'm surprised you haven't seen her yet. <laughs> We're getting some questions from the audience, which we will get to later. That was Real Talk Tribe vibes, which I love Ooh, because it just survived. breaks it down. You're done, you're done. You're done, you relax. Um, moving on back to your listings, which this one's phenomenal. And I think we even have a video. Let's hope that it loaded. Here we go. Tell us about this listing that you have and Caseo. Hmm? Caseo? Oh, Cassiano. Cassiano, I said Cassiano. it right. Cassiano. <laughs> um, so this is actually is kind of connected. So the house that I did grow up in and that I did not sneak out of this is located right next door. So the other one that we also had a bunch of white parties at. So that's where we met this client because we were neighbors. And so it's also located in Bel Air. Wow. Um, unfortunately, you can't see our old house. It's literally right next door. And this is a great, great family home. Uh, the current owners, they built it for themselves, uh, for their family. And they had young toddlers at the time. 
So um, I have a great big yard, a great lot. A huge yard. Here, let me show the yard. Amazing. Yeah, the yard is amazing. And there is room to build a pool. They specifically did not put in a pool because of the ages of their kids at the time, but someone can definitely build a pool. Um, you got views of the valley. You get amazing sunsets. You get... Uh, yeah, roll tape. Can you, oh, you're going to play the video? Yeah, roll tape. Um, it also... It is just the high ceilings, the great living spaces. Um, it's really, it's really comfy and it's Mediterranean, but there's contemporary uh, finishes too, like in the kitchen. This was my favorite is the master with these views of the Yeah, hillside. the master is great. It's very big, very luxurious. It has an attached sitting room, which is really nice with the fireplace. And I mean, the views from Bel Air, when you get those canyon views, it's almost like you're in a different world or just a different city. That's what I love about it. Totally, totally. Different I love canyon views just as equally as much as I love city views. It's just like more nature-y vibe. Exactly. Green. And people are wanting that. What are you seeing buyers? We're seeing a lot of influx of buyers from New York and San Francisco. Yeah. What are you seeing your buyers want that aren't from LA right now? What are they looking for, Farrah? Just more space. I think before people were trending to, oh, I don't really need as much space, you know, let's live a little more simply, um, pers you know, prospectively for the price point that might be, you know, for some right. people, 10,000 versus 20. But I think now people want that outdoor space. They want the yard. They want, you know, multiple home offices. They want mm -hmm. you know, for their kids to uh, do their Zoom video schooling. So... <laughs> just kind of even more formal spaces versus like the big great room I'm yes. seeing. I'm um, seeing a lot of those kinds of requests for sure. You did, I, I uh, recently saw an article with you and your father on Worth where you were talking about the new normal of real estate, which I thought was really smart. Is this the new normal? Are we ever gonna go back to open houses? Are we ever gonna go back to huge parties that you and I used to dance around at? Like. What's going to happen for that? I feel like for uh, the next foreseeable future, people are going to be very paranoid. And maybe they're just, even if things opened up, let's say tomorrow, I think people are going to be very, you know, hesitant. Mm -hmm. um, assuming I'm saying that there was like a vaccine or something. But right. once there is a vaccine, I think, yeah, I think everyone's going to want to go back to the normal. We, I mean, we're human beings. We like to be social. We like to gather. So I see that, you know, it, it'll get back to normal eventually. Well, this was 3.995. Again, another beautiful property under $4 Yeah, million. that's also a big deal. That's a really great price to get all those features, 4,600 square feet, five bedrooms yeah. in LA. Yeah. That's a good, good deal. It's a beautiful property. And in the Bel Air uh, zip codes, you get all exactly. the Exactly. Yes, yes. Well. Um, all right, well, let's go p play our next game, which is called Serving... Serving Luke's. Ooh, Luke's. I love Luke's. <laughs> we're serving, we're serving <laughs> Luke's with Farah, who <laughs> is well known for her amazing fashion, like mind blowing outfits. Mind blowing. Wow. Every Thank time. You. So, we're going to play a game, Farah, where we show you two outfits, and you have to decide if you're going to, if it's a forever outfit or Ooh. a for now outfit. Okay, okay. Okay, forever or for now with Farah serving Luke's. Here we go, casual chic. Can um, you see it? Make it big. Oh, oh yes, I can see it. Oh, that's a forever one. Oh, that one. Okay, the one you're on my left. So the white, yeah, definitely forever because it's simple. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't wear a top like that when I'm going to work, but right. it's a great easy. I could wear that outfit to work, and then if I want to go out at night and spice it up, do a little t tie knot, and definitely that's a forever. Can you see the B option? I don't. It's oh, I, small. I, I. Oh, yeah. Now I can. But that's yeah, also can. forever. Yeah, for sure. It's just a silk cami with some jean shorts. Uh, I. I remember that day. I really liked that little look. I don't wear shorts often. It's not really my thing. But I was mm -hmm. feeling it that day. So you, you don't wear shorts ever. It's not your thing. You wear no. like sundresses. I do. I wouldn't call them. Sun yeah, I guess sundresses. And it's, I love. It's I love dresses. It's pronounced Luke's. Luke, so, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, next one, Halloween Luke's. The Halloween, uh, Halloween Luke's. Boo, which one is your favorite? Is the cat a forever look or a for now? The cat, I, it was one of my favorite costumes. Definitely the most um, covered up than usual. But that is Carl Lagerfeld's cat, Choupette. 
which was, hello, genius. I, I'm not saying I'm the first person to do that costume, but and my boyfriend, he dressed it up as Carl, and I was yes. Sure. And yes. it was comfortable, and I just I loved it. So that was definitely my favorite. Okay, and uh, next we've got formal Farah in Luke's. Which one's forever, and which one's for now? Definitely the black is forever, a classic look. Luke, uh, sorry, Luke. Luke breakfast at Tiffany's Luke. And the pink is, no, that was a New Year's Eve dress, loved it, but uh, no, I won't be bringing that back out of the archives. <laughs> Isn't your birthday near Halloween? It's on Halloween. Oh my God. Yes, yeah, my birthday. Yeah. Farrowween. Oh, Scorpios. Yeah, I love they love Scorpio. cats. But you're a Scorpio? <laughs> no, oh. it's Alexis in the oh, background as oh, I'm talking. <laughs> Alexis, come say hi if you're going to say hi to Farah. She loves yes, you. Say yeah. hi. Yeah. <laughs> hi. Thanks for helping me out the other day. Yeah, yeah. Getting all set up. Next, Luke, hats off to you. Which hat mm. do you like better? Can you see it? I'm like a big. Oh. Yes. Oh, I love both of these hats. The white one has got a lot of use. Uh, <laughs> it's a very, it goes with everything. The navy one, also I love. I love both, honestly, they're tied. I need to bring that one out more, actually. I love a light hat, Luke. I love it. And then last but I love my hat, Luke. Least, winter chic with Farah. Ooh, Ooh hard, those were, hard Those work. were good, those were good days. I was pretty excited about those two outfits. Honestly. Look at those silver sneakers. What type of sneaker is that? My God. That is a Montclair sneaker. Actually, oh, the, whole, the whole outfit is actually. You're and, kidding. Well, that's my ski jacket and pants. So also very, it goes from the mountain to the après ski. And it gets a lot of use, that outfit, since I bought it. So I don't know if Montclair. I can like, wear that every year, though. I mean, that's kind of something you wear once, like on one season. On one season, on right? Season. Yeah. Darn it. Uh, Aurora Rod V says, where are your hats from? My hats. The, the white one is the, the Lovely Birds is the brand. And I forgot where I got it, but great brand, the Lovely Birds. Uh -huh. And the other one is from Saks. And it's Eugenia Kim, I believe, is the brand. Also wow. Nice. The lovely birds, everyone. And back to our winter chic Luke's. Amazing. Thank Phenomenal. You. That was serving Luke's with Irving Luke's. Luke's. Good choices. <laughs> okay, for one more game, and then we're going to close with your biggest listing, which you didn't send me pictures of, but I stole from online. Oh. So before we go to your big, amazing listing, I want to play a quick round of our favorite game. What the Insta, where we show you pictures from your Instagram and you tell us what's going on in this picture. Okay. First one, what the Insta? Ooh, you know, that was just like a regular Saturday night out going to the just, club. I think you're going to church. No, right? that is on Halloween, <laughs> on my actual birthday two yes. years ago. So, you look amazing as a blonde. I like doing, thank you. I like doing one Halloween night as a blonde because it's now become a tradition and it's fun. And Wait, how many uh, Halloween nights are you having? Okay, well, first of all, like maybe two to three. But that, who knows? You know, I'm getting older now. That's probably not going to happen. But because it's my birthday, it's like a week long <laughs> thing. And yes. so we like to go all out. It's like one and a half now that you're getting older. What the Insta? Who's Ooh, this? That's my boyfriend, Alex. He's, and um, you, I love we his name. In, what? Oh, yeah. Best name ever, right? Best okay. name. Uh, we were in Miami, actually, here, watching Paris perform at a club called Wall. Mm. So, and we had just started dating kind of around that time. Yeah, here he is again. Oh, yeah, he's cute. He's, he's great eye candy. And he's, he's cute person. and he's not Better. trying. You know, like oh, no. those guys he doesn't have trying. to try. He's very, very cool on his own. I and here that. we're going to a, <laughs> this that seems like, this is only like a year and a half ago or a year, but these days feel like so far gone. Uh -huh, we were exactly. going to, uh, the reason I'm dressed like that, we were going to a peace, love and something, peace, love, peace and love party. <laughs> oh, oh, I get so it. I'm dressed kind of like hippie. a hippie, a hippie vibe. Hippie theme. What the Insta? Oh. That's me and my mom when I'm oh, back when I was an only child. Oh my and God. Now you have three sisters. Now I have three sisters, exactly. But my mom, her hair, 
Can you believe it was like, it used to be down to like below her butt. It's and amazing. she has the most amazing thick hair. I didn't really get that gene, so. You have got great hair. What are you talking about? Well, not as good as her, but thank you. What, did you think your mom ever wanted a boy, a son, uh, or? Yeah, I mean, she, they for sure wanted one, but you know, they got four girls and they're so happy. My mom's like, what would I have done with a boy? I mean, she would have been, a great, she would have been great no matter what, of course. Um, and Mauricio, he's easy, you know, he likes being the king of the house. I would say, yeah, um, I, I have a friend who also has only daughters and I asked him and he was like, no, I love having all women energy around me. Oh, and they have six dogs, five of which are girls. So oh that God. household is like bananas. <laughs> what the Insta, this is you at, one of our parties. Oh yeah, I was just gonna say. Yes, it was. That was a Which fun I loved party. Because, what I loved about this party, I had to bring this up, is you went home and you changed and then you came back. Like you did a whole costume change. Did I? I Are you yes. sure? Yes, you did, because that was my that's my favorite Farrah moment. Oh, I don't no, I was wearing a big jacket coat over that dress. But that would have been really crazy and cool. I mean, maybe that happened. I really don't think so. But I had like a long trench coat and it was freezing. And then I it was took it off and there was my dress. But we Alexis, had... back me up on this. She changed. I thought you changed. Very I think you're getting me confused with somebody else. But well, the story's better if you go home and change. Okay, fine. I went home and changed. I <laughs> came back in a full outfit change because, you know, I had to be real extra that day. And that's one of my best friends, Melissa. And it was super fun. Great party. It was a great party. And last one, what the Insta, which one are you in this photo? Pretty much the only brunette in the bottom right one over. So but that is, the babies. yeah, this that one. is all of us, the cousins uh, on Easter with our grandmother. Yeah, she's in the picture. So we so used to go to Palm Desert every year for Easter, kind of a family Easter tradition. So, oh my God. Easter bunny. So, so cute. That was what the Insta, you guys. Thanks for playing along. I love for, these uh, games. I, love I think them. now it's just, it's only fair since you're getting such excitement from the comment section and people are tuning in from all over the world to take a few questions. We've got a hi from New Orleans, a hi from Belgium. No, Your fave, no. food, fave food to cook and eat out. Fave food to cook. Well, I just got pretty good at cooking during quarantine. I made this mm. really great dish that was like a Japanese eggplant dish which was awesome. And I also- Are you vegetarian? No, but we've kind of been eating more plant-based meals lately. Mm -hmm. So that was a great dish. I also did replicate a Benihana situation, uh, <laughs> but with, with shrimp. We, we do eat shrimp. Um, I, so I made it. the whole like fried rice Benihana thing and it was really, really good. And you tossed it and caught it in your hat? Oh, of course, of course. Of and course made beating hearts and everything. Um, and then eating, eating out, was that the question? Yes. We order. Totally we do order in a lot too. Je comprende pas la anglais. I don't know what that person's <laughs> saying. Hey, from England. Uh, next one. Next question. How do you deal Hi. with difficult negative people? Um, I just don't deal with them. <laughs> you just. I mean, well, it's one thing if it's clients, then you have to deal with them, and it's just staying calm. And let's say um, it's a client. Let's say it's a client. Yeah, so with clients, you kind of just have to let people vent. And if you did something wrong, take responsibility. Um, don't try to prove yourself always, though. Sometimes you just have to say, you know, I'm sorry, even if you weren't wrong and they're, and mm -hmm. they're, and they're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, say, I'm sorry that happened. And next time we'll do it better or, you know, whatever you can do just to like simmer things down. Because sometimes people are in the moment, you know, reactive and then they chill out. Exactly, exactly. Comment section on fire, best makeup brand that to use. Who's, who are you oh, obsessed with right now? The best makeup brand, I don't know what the best one is, but I use NARS a lot. I like Charlotte Tilbury. Mm -hmm. I like Charlotte Tilbury. And I've actually been using Bare Minerals lately. I'm just trying to Old simplify school. the whole routine because I can't deal with the whole thing. I, I can't either. Old school, Bare Minerals. I use Tom yeah. Ford Makeup for Men. No one's asking me, but <laughs> Toronto, Holland, Belize, London. Wow. My God, oh, I love cool. it. Where in the world? Uh, how do you juggle everything whilst focusing on career, family, social life, and personal growth? Um, just juggle it. That's exactly how. Literally, just 
keep doing. But you're really good with your do. time. I think you're good with your time, Vera. Like you, you, you schedule it out. Mm, you, I do, you know? but it just every day is like running from one thing to the next, the next, the next, the next, the next, the next. Really, so you kind of have to schedule in your like sometimes phone calls with friends even. Um, oh my god! It's, I, I can't just now. pick up the phone and chat with friends, which really sucks. I wish that that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. um, it's like okay, can you talk on Friday? Like it's uh, it's like Sunday. Um, so it's kind of just putting everything in the calendar. That's yeah, I do way. voice, voice texts now, voice text now to friends. It's like, I'm leaving you a message and you're going to listen to it. My friends do that to me too. But the thing is when they send it, I, I, I can't listen to it. And then I forget about them sometimes. I'm like, can you just like <laughs> text me so I can read? <laughs> the comment section's on fire asking amazing questions. One, uh, Cassie Claire says your lipstick is perfection. What are you wearing? Oh, thank you. I actually... How about in my pocket? Let me see. Oh, yes. So yeah. I love a lip liner. I have mm -hmm. NARS. NARS. Um, this one's called Bahama. And Ooh. then we have um, Bare Minerals. Bare Minerals. This is like an infomercial. Heaven, it's called. I only Ooh. like to wear these nude kind of colors, so. <laughs> what, which Real Housewife of Beverly Hills friend of your mom's is your favorite from the Bravo-holic? Oh, I don't know if we can um, play favorites. You know, I, they're all super great, honestly. I love them. How about uh, who's the last one that you saw in person? Probably Teddy. 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 Because we were getting their house she's ready. She's house. so great. She's so awesome. And I, if I love, you guys are I love just them joining all. us, you can see that house that she's selling later on our IGTV. We'll post this episode of Real Talk. Uh, and let's do two more questions. What did you, uh, what's your favorite piece of jewelry that you own? That's a good one. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm not wearing either piece. I, well, it's a ring and it's, um, it was an emerald that my dad's mom gave my mom and my mm -hmm. mom turned it into a ring. She custom made it from inspo from my grand, my other grandmother's taste. So it kind of is like a blend of my mom and both my grandmother's. And I lost it in Greece three years ago, and we were devastated. And oh my then my God. mom recreated it and made me a new one this year for my birthday. Oh my God. That's Not the so original sweet. emerald, but it's okay. It still reminds me of all of them every time. Uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's about the memory, not really about the material. Uh, That's Christina true. Sanchez has an amazing question Are you going to take over the agency one day? Ooh, I guess you'll have to stay tuned. Yeah, <laughs> stay tuned, Sanchez. Uh, how do you get people to convert over to um, that's, that's more of an industry one. We already did. How many pets do you have? Uh, we're not going to go into that. Investment heels. Oh. I love this question because I do think that as you're starting your career, you should invest in some, we, I call them your uniform. Things yes, that you're going to wear. definitely. Although I will say I have some amazing heels and probably Louboutins are my favorite, although not the most comfortable, but I cannot deal. I do not wear those kind of heels on showings. I can't. My tall, my, I can wear really high heels for like two hours. And you will not see me running around working in crazy high heels. So I'm more of like a laser blouse, cute pants, and either like a Chanel flat or a small heel. Or Sensible. Boots. Or boots. I, I love that. Sensible. Um, what or boots? Mm -hmm. Did love you, um, boots. Who, how'd you, who'd you learn makeup from? Was it your mom? Because you're the oldest daughter. Yes. My mom. So 100%. You... She could do her own makeup. I mean, she's amazing. She taught me all the tricks. So I'm grateful. Oh, there's a cat. Oh, what? There's a where? Cat. Where? where? <laughs> <She> cat. <laughs> See? Okay. Oh, there. I love all the trees. Yeah. <laughs> She's just making she it. She came out of hiding, coming to say hello to you guys. Two tips for selling your house. What are when you get a new listing? What are two tips that you tell everyone to to focus on? Not to oversell. I think there's a very fine line. Of course, you have to sell the amenities and the highlights and, you know, let them know if there's a certain kind of stone or the really special things. But I feel like if you are hardcore selling every single thing, then the buyer's kind of like, okay, they probably do this at every single property. <laughs> and like, do they really believe in the, you know, the house? So it's about using your intuition. I feel like, you know, um, and, 
and that's pretty much like I think the most important thing. Then of course you have to market it really well. You have to have beautiful photography. Nowadays, not only do we do property videos too, but now we're giving you know doing 3D Matterport tours. Right. Um, so you kind of have to have every single thing in your toolbox nowadays to show mm -hmm. buyers like here's every single angle that you can possibly see for this house. Um, but yeah, your marketing just has to be on point. So, and use social media. Because yes, and the agency is good at all of those things. Marketing, social media, they're yes. all awesome. Yes, they are amazing. Which I love. Um, Aloha from Molai, <laughs> wait, Maui. But um, <laughs> what time of day do you get up and what time of day do you go to bed? And don't oh, lie. I, I love this question. Okay. So Let's now go. in the past, well, during quarantine, I've been waking up at like 6.45, 6.50, no later than seven. Mm -hmm. um, and, but before that, I was waking up for a few months at five every day, which I loved in the moment, but I also realized after the fact now, that I think I was, it was making me kind of like emotional. Like I <laughs> felt sensitive, I guess I was really tired. Um, but I loved the feeling of waking up at five before you know the chaos and kind of doing my morning workouts. Now it's not mm -hmm. as necessary. I can't go to the gym anyways. So no, I, but I do have a whole seven. morning ritual. Like you, I do up. have a whole morning ritual. I, I do. I can't look at my I phone the first thing. I need like my coffee. I need a little while to just like get awake and in the zone. So mm -hmm. uh, and I go to bed. I would say between well, when I was waking up at five, I was going to bed around nine thirty ten, and now more like ten thirty eleven thirty. There you go. Yeah, you need to get the hours. You got to get your sleep. You have to. <laughs> when are you and Alex getting married from Marine 2526? Marine, that's a very personal question. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. It's a little over the line. We're going to end this on that question and go to your last listing, which is phenomenal. Take us to the Orem house. And by the way, you didn't send me these photos. I pulled them from online. I, I did send them, but that's fine. I love this house. So, so this house me. is really amazing it really really is incredible Whoa. i mean look at that it's so unique it's phenomenal unique. and Who's the architect it's zoltan pally so zoltan pally famous architect from la uh he did the you know the wall the annenberg center in beverly hills yeah, the wall the performing arts. Yeah. um and our client saw that and looked at his you know um all of the properties that he's done and said you know i have to have this guy I need to create a trophy property that Look at this. is so cool. I mean, it's like something out of Iron Man. It's insane. Yeah, the shape of it, you can tell from that picture, is like a propeller. And the, the developer owner, she calls it like two kissing boomerangs, also. Yeah. And the yeah. idea for the home, she wanted, to be, wanted it to be about entertaining, but also about family and also about wellness, which is very, you know, not on trend, but just what everybody wants these days. And she built this on spec? She did. She built wow. it as a spec property. And it's 18,000 or almost 19,000 square feet. It has these most gorgeous stones you've ever seen. It has the most insane views from downtown mm -hmm. to the Getty. The, I mean, the view of the Getty is like, you've never seen a view of the Getty. This Where is close. it located? Bel Air? So this is in Bel Air as well. We got a lot of Bel Air properties today. Sure do. Yeah, and it's double gated. So there's a gate for th uh, two houses on the street. And then this property also has its own set of gates. Very secure, very private. There's a amazing gym. There's a the sauna, steam room, massage room. This Insane. theater, which I thought was so cool. Just the theater dynamic. is incredible. You know, top, 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 top of the line. Um, and the whole vibe, I mean, it's, it's a warm, modern, mm -hmm. not stark cold. It's, it's really, really tastefully done. Really, really beautiful. We're only going to show you a little bit. If you need to see more, you have to check it out online. It's yes. the Orem house. And you guys have kind of held it back because at this level for this buyer, you do want to, you know. Keep oh, yeah. You have to be there. You know, you really have to vet these buyers because you... <laughs> As you can imagine, at this price point, there are looky loos who take their chance. They try to get into these properties, or they sometimes, you know, we've had people—not this property in particular, but others 
send bogus, you know, kind of financials and everything. Right. So you really need to make sure that these people are qualified because you don't want just anybody coming into these homes. That's amazing. Well, we're going to end with a quick uh, look at uh, Kylie Jenner, no, sorry, Kendall, Kendall. Jenner's house. <laughs> And AD, just to celebrity stock while we wrap it up, designed by wow. Lolo Fernandez. Oh, wow, cool. And Tommy Clemens, look at that. Beautiful. Ooh, this just hit AD today. Oh, that's I'm obsessed. So cool. Amazing. But I'm more obsessed with you, Farah. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been talking for almost an hour. Oh my God, that's so crazy. I had the best time, thank you so much. Hopefully we get to see each other in person someday soon. I would love that. And, and thank go you for having me. Yes, and go kill it on your listings. I know you've got uh, the Open Housewives of Beverly Hills that you're focusing on. You've got amazing properties, and we wish you all the best. Good luck, good luck. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Thanks for keeping it real talk. Bye, Farah. Bye. Oh, she's amazing. Thank you to Farah Brittany of the agency, our fierce female founder. We got to a lot today, and I just am just blown away by everything she's doing. From 53 million all the way down to 3 million, she's a leading female here in Los Angeles and in the country, and she's an inspiration to us all. Thank you to you for watching. Join us tomorrow at 11.11, and once again, thanks for keeping it Real Talk. Bye-bye.